Hi, I'm Olivia, and I'm an educator that works here at the Bronx Zoo in New York City. The Bronx Zoo is part of the Wildlife Conservation Society, which works all over the world to save wildlife. One of the advantages of having zoos as part of our global conservation work is that we have access to all of the facilities and resources at the zoo, such as our high-tech laboratory. In this lab, we can test and analyze things that wouldn't otherwise be possible in the field, giving our field researchers a ton of valuable information. Let's hear from experts on two different projects where lab work is critical to the success of the conservation efforts. We'll hear from a WCS researcher in Myanmar about ways that lab work assists with the reintroduction efforts of the Burmese star tortoise, which is critically endangered. We'll also hear from our partners, the Royal Zoological Society of Scotland, who are using their lab to aid in the genetic analysis of wildcats in Scotland. Both of these are terrific examples of the importance of zoo labs and wildlife conservation. Let's hear more. Having animals in zoos and wildlife parks allows us to educate um, visitors. Um, there's also a lot of research that's done in zoos, working with the animals. Um, we learn a lot about different diseases through the health monitoring programs that we have. We learn new things about animal behaviour that we can actually apply to some of the field research or field conservation projects. WCS is uniquely situated because we have laboratory facilities in our zoos and aquariums in New York City. And that allows us to do controlled research in addition to having field research sites in 60 countries around the world. And that allows us to look at conservation holistically. We can look at uh, both animals in our collection and also animals in the field. Now, the uh, Burmese star tortoise is, is a critically endangered species in Myanmar. They were disappearing very rapidly from the wild. They're heavily sought by the pet trade. In the early 2000s, uh, Wildlife Conservation Society and Turtle Survival Alliance decided to establish uh, captive assurance colonies. And these are just breeding groups of animals that function as, as kind of a hedge against extinction. In case the wild population goes extinct, we still have animals in captivity. Wildcats are an iconic species, being one of the few remaining large UK predators. However, they are clinging on by a claw, with the last few individuals only remaining within Scotland. Wildcats in Scotland look a lot like tabby domestic cats, but they are different. They can weigh up to 8 kilograms and be up to 1 metre in length. They have excellent senses and razor-sharp claws, making them some of the best predators around. Wildcats are listed as critically endangered in the UK, having undergone centuries of persecution. However, one of their main threats now is from hybridisation with domestic and feral cats. With such rapid changes occurring to our environment in the current day, it is even more vital that we maintain genetic diversity through time. It is only by maintaining this diversity that we provide species with the key abilities and tools that they need to survive into the future. Now, the uh, Burmese star tortoises, they live their lives in captivity. Um, you take them and dump them into the wild, they're disoriented, they don't know where they are, and they literally just scatter to the wind. So we build these temporary, uh, what we call pre-release uh, pre acclimation pens. We put the tortoises in there, we leave them for a year. And then at the end of the year, we just open the gate, leave a few holes around the fence, and we just allow the tortoises to find their way. We monitor them, we put radio transmitters on a subset of the animals and we follow them around. We've been doing that for a number of years now, and uh, it's, it's very successful. The, the survival rate is very high. We're actually getting tortoises that we release are now reproducing in the wild. We think it is really important that captive populations can, where possible, be used as insurance populations to be released back into the wild if they ever do go extinct in the wild. It's for that reason that it's so vital to maintain genetic diversity within captive populations. And a key part of our work is trying to identify those individuals that have really unique genetics compared to the other captive individuals. Because diversity isn't always visible just by looking at an animal, we need to use our genetic laboratory to find out how much diversity actually remains hidden within the cells of each animal. It's only this genetic diversity that will provide the fundamental building blocks with which adaptation and evolution can act 
Um, depending on the scenario, we, we have the opportunity to collect different samples and then that gets um, given to our, our specialist um, genetics team and they conduct a, a wildcat genetic test which allows us to look at the levels of hybridization between um, what we think is a suspected wildcat um, and one that would be a hybrid or a domestic cat. And a big part of the work at Wild Genes Laboratory is to help identify those individuals that have really key diversity that's different to the other individuals within captive populations. We can then make decisions on uh, breeding those individuals in order to stop that loss of genetic diversity from the population. Genetic work is extremely important for conservation. Without the genetic testing that we've conducted on wildcat samples, we would not know about the huge threat being faced by them from feral and domestic cats. The importance of lab work, well, when we have all these turtles in captivity, they're living in a fairly high density situation where you've literally got hundreds of turtles in, in one pen. So you always have the potential for a disease outbreak. What we wanted to do was screen all of these, you know, all of these tortoises before we release them into the wild to make sure we're not, you know, releasing, we're not introducing a disease into the wild, but also to look for novel diseases that may be in the tortoises that we don't recognize that are in the, in the population itself. Uh, it's one of the, the guidelines of any successful reintroduction is to make sure, you know, to preserve the health of the animals that you're releasing, both the animals that are being released and the animals that are in the wild. And so our health screens were kind of the keystone, the cornerstone of that, uh, of that effort. Another key part of that project, perhaps one of the most important parts of that project, is to work with local communities, work with local stakeholders, um, and to, to drum up a lot of support for wildcat conservation. By using such an amazing, beautiful animal like the wildcat, we can engage with the public and highlight our own native species whilst protecting wildcats in Scotland. A project such as Saving Wildcats ticks all the boxes, providing insight into the work being done right here, the skills that are being used and current scientific knowledge. In return, we hope that the learners will be moved to action to help wildlife conservation around the globe and support our future work.